Hi, YouTubers! It is raining cats and dogs outside, of course, again for weeks and today again. So we're going to have stew tonight and I asked Rosie this morning to make us her very, very special bread. And I've been hearing her, can you hear her, singing in the kitchen. So let's go and see what she is doing. <laughs> the French baguette. <laughs> bonjour, mademoiselle. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Comment allez-vous? Bonjour. I told bonjour, our friends. Bonjour. I told our friends that you would make us our very special bread and welcome into the kitchen today we're going to be making a very fast french baguette you know the baguette is the very long skinny bread that you see well people riding around the streets of paris on their bicycles and you'll wonder what are those long looks like loaves of bread that they have in their bikes and of course they're called baguettes b-a-g-u-e-t-t-e -E -T -T -E. And they're a very flavorful, tremendously tasty bread. But uh, there's something that uh, an artist and baker or somebody that's baking bread for a living, they don't have the urge at noon to bake bread the day they want to eat it. They start several days ahead of time to make that bread because it allows that dough to absorb the wild yeast in the environment and it allows the dough to ferment a little bit and get a very, very deep flavor well we like things fast in this country and why not develop a quick baguette that you can make the day that you would like to eat it we can add a couple ingredients a couple tricky ingredients to this to make people think that this dough has been aged for days it will get rid of a lot of a lot of the raw flour flavor that's in some of the doughs and some of the breads the quick breads and it's going to look beautiful too and when you serve that they're going to go "Woo! this is some kind of bread okay so we're making a quick baguette today it's going to be long and skinny and it's going to be very tasty okay come on over to the counter and i will show you our ingredients remember typically when the french make baguettes they use four ingredients flour salt water and yeast we're going to add a couple extra ones of our own and well we're going to cheat the french today please 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 forgive me. now one thing that you absolutely want to do the day that you decide to make your bread is as early as possible on that day you want to get your base liquids ready you want to take Oh, about a tablespoon, two or two teaspoons or one tablespoon of yeast and use a good yeast. And we want to proof that yeast. We want to put it in a bowl uh, with a little bit of sugar and a little bit of warm water. And we want it to get nice and bubbly as you see right here. And I like to take the whisk. And for some reason, subscribers really like to see this part. I like to take the whisk and make sure everything's all incorporated and it's very, very foamy. Okay, so I started this about a half hour ago and I'm now going to go ahead and add the flour. Now, this has about, uh, I'm going to say a cup and a half, two cups of water in here with uh, two teaspoons of yeast and a uh, two teaspoons of sugar. Okay, and that's all that's in here. All right things aren't as precise when it comes to bread making because so much of it is done by feel so i'm going to go get a cup and we'll go ahead and add our flour now and add in our secret ingredients okay so now i'm going to go ahead and before i add the flour in i'm going to put about uh, two about the one and a half tablespoons of olive oil in, and that's going to help to enrich the bread a little bit and it's going to act as a binder for our secret ingredient and here it comes here this is actually nor chicken powder k-n-o-r-r -R. and what you're going to do 
This is not going to be a big loaf. You're going to take one teaspoon, and it can be rounded, of the Knorr chicken powder, and you're going to go ahead and add it to your base liquids here, okay? And then we're also, now remember, that's going to have some salt in it, okay? Salt is a component, and then we're going to add one teaspoon of salt to that also, and that's all of the components that we're going to use except flour for this bread. So you want to make sure now that this is combined very thoroughly. Trying to give you the best angles on this today. Go ahead and shake, 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 shake. And you want to really thoroughly combine all of those ingredients in this. Make sure you use sea salt. Don't use regular iodized. Don't use regular salt, okay? That has silica in it, which is really just cut glass, and you don't want that in your stomach, okay? That's an anti-caking agent. So now what we want to do, we have that thoroughly mixed there. Oh, and that already smells great. Now we're going to go ahead and add our flour. And I'm going to see, I don't know, here's the cup right here. I'm going to go ahead and add an initial one cup of flour and we're going to stir that in. Okay. You can work that in. You have to get a little slop a little bit on the counter. Okay, and then we're going to add a second cup of flour. We're going to put that in and just kind of work that in a little bit. Okay, we're going to make a moist dough. We're not going to make a very uh, a very firm dough. Okay, you can see the way that's coming together there. So it's more like a batter, isn't it? And make sure you get all that goodness. A lot of these people see me on the baking videos. They see me whirling things like spoons and spatulas, and it's all technique. Okay. Then we're going to take one, about a half a cup. Just enough so that we start to firm this up and we're going to add that in, okay? And this is the part where you play it by ear until you get the consistency of the dough. It starts to be easy to handle, okay? We're going to go ahead and add our last half a cup for right now. This now brings us up to three cups of uh, dough, okay? And now it's finally starting to get to that consistency that I like to see on there okay isn't that beautiful now that is all combined so I can go ahead and uh, take my spoon I can scrape that off and now I can cover this for an hour or so and I can let this moist dough rise okay you can see the way that looks okay now we'll be adding some more flour to that later on once we uh, once we get that to rise a little bit and uh, we'll let it rise a second time to its final and we'll put that out on the pan and uh, shape it but now it's going to have that flavor of that chicken powder which is going to put some savoriness in that okay so we're going to cover that sit that in a warm place I'll see you in an hour. The alarm just went off. The uh, timer just went off for an hour. And you can see we have a very elastic dough now. How wonderful is that? Hmm? Awesome. So what we want to do now is add a uh, add enough flour to this to, to start keep keep it firming up. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to, this time we're going to be using our hands a little bit and getting in here and really working this dough okay because it's going to be firmer now because we have the flour in okay so let's get this uh, cleaned up and set on the side and let's get our hands in here and get working this i've added some flour in enough i'm going to uh, flour the counter and i'm going to pour this out on the counter and we're going to work this dough a bit to get all of that extra flour so we're really up to about uh Mm, three and a half cups of flour and you can see how nice and soft and elastic this dough is this is going to make an amazing baguette so this is uh, the way we're going to keep working this we want to get all of this dough in 
and uh, we want to work it enough so nothing is really sticking on our hands that way we know we have enough gluten built up in the bread that it will rise and it won't be inhibited in its rise and I'm going to tell you you're going to be very amazed by the way we bake this bread too you can throw out all the ideas you ever have about traditional bed bread baking and how it should be so there it is and if we were going to have an Italian loaf that's the way that would look right now a beautiful Italian loaf but I think what we're going to do is we're going to let this rise one more time get that back into the shape of the bowl love that <laughs> back into the bowl and we're going to cover that and we're going to put it in the oven the oven's not on it's about 100 100 degrees and we'll let that uh, we'll let that rise some more be careful don't overheat it okay you don't want to kill we're the now an hour number two has been completed and look at how that bread has risen Woo! Let's deflate that down a little bit we're going to put that on the counter and we're now at the point where we're going to form our bread into loaves what i call the fun part of it and then we're going to let that rise one final time and then we're going to talk while that's rising one more time we're going to talk about a trick for baking temperatures and also the egg wash that we're going to use to give it a nice brown color on it and a nice uh, nice glossy coat let's start by putting some flour down on the counter and let's work our dough out and drop it right in there work quickly with your hand and you won't have a big mess in your bowl okay it's all about technique okay we're going to have some wonderful bread here move that around and get that uh, get that all in there and this is our last chance don't have to don't have to knead it too aggressively we don't want to knock out all the gases that are in the dough okay we're just working that really nicely there it's got a really nice gluten to it it's starting to get some really nice elasticity and remember that's what allows it to rise if it's not really elastic if all that gluten hasn't had a chance to really work and it's not going to rise is it it's going to reach a certain point and then it's going to feel like it's in a straitjacket would you like that <laughs> i sure would well maybe if the, well never mind <laughs> all right so there we go we're still working our dough ball here I want this to have the maximum gluten here and amazingly for two hours we have a very fine piece of dough here okay all right and i think believe it or not what we're going to do since we have a little extra time today we're only in our second hour we're going to pop it into the bowl for a half hour and back in the oven remember the more times we do that the more stretchy and the more wonderful this bread is going to get the more it's going to rise and create all those little pockets for butter and everything else okay back into the bowl where are you bowl there we are while the <laughs> while the dough is in the oven relaxing and having its final rise before we shape it let's take a minute to talk bread theory those of you who bake bread know the traditional recipes call for you to put your oven at 350 degrees and you put your bread in a loaf pan and you put it in for about 45 minutes to one hour that's fine but what you're not getting is you're not getting the artisan bread with the nice pockets inside that uh, well the flavor pockets i call them where you have holes and things that really define what a great uh, artisan bread is and particularly a french bread so what you need to do is when your bread hits that oven it needs to hit like a, a hot 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 oven 600 to 800 degrees yes you heard right 600 to 800 degrees as high as you can get at 800 degrees of a pizza oven you put it in there first we spray the top of it we give it a bit of an egg wash and we uh, we uh, form our crisscross pattern so it'll rise nicely and won't that uh, won't explode we hit it with our egg wash and then finally we're going to hit that with the spray bottle with a little bit of water and what that's going to do is when that loaf hits that high heat that water sprayed on that uh, loaf exterior on the outside there on the outside where the crust will be is going to delay that crust from setting up 
And because that's going to delay that crust from setting up, the inside of the bread is going to have a chance to heat rapidly and you're going to have a rapid oven spring. All of a sudden that bread is just going to grow 50% in size very rapidly. Now if you were to put that in a traditional oven at 350 degrees, yes you get some an initial rise, but what also happens is the crust forms rather quickly and it constrains the bread and doesn't allow it to really reach its maximum what I call artisan potential. It's fine if you want a very fine grain bread, like sandwich breads and things like that. But for us, when we're making a baguette, no, 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 Monsieur Mademoiselle, no, no, no. We want those uh, big luscious air pockets and we want that beautiful depth of flavor that comes from, uh, comes from technique. Uh, and ingredients. Okay, so get used to working with a really hot. Now we come to what I think is the fun part of the whole process and that is actually forming our baguettes. Our dough has had two very nice rises here. We can now kick it out of the uh, bowl and onto our counter. Remember, put your dough out quickly and you won't have any problem with the messy bowls. And you can see this has plenty of bubbles in it from the uh, carbon dioxide. And that shows that you have a very healthy and active dough, which is exactly what we want. So we don't want to work this too much. We're going to cut this into about uh, three pieces. Make sure you have a very sharp knife, okay? We'll cut that into about three pieces. And they don't have to be uh, perfectly in size. In fact, they're not. One will be a little bigger than the other, and it's not going to matter. Make sure your flat counter's floured real well here. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to stretch this out and widen it at the same time. See how I'm moving that apart? We're trying not to knock all of the gas out of it, okay? Very important to try to retain that gas in there, okay? You don't want to take it all out, okay? Then we want to do is kind of turn the, turn the sides into each other, just like this. I hope you can see that okay and pinch them really well pinch that and what we're going to do next is we're going to roll this and if we have to compact it a little bit to get a very uniform size we will and look at that you know what we're making here folks we are making a really beautiful baguette right there and look at that hmm so isn't, that a, isn't that a thing of beauty? Okay, you can also pinch it in underneath there. So you have a nice uh, uniform size. If it's a little thin in the area, just kind of draw it together and pinch it in there a little bit and bring it together, okay? And then just roll it some more and you have a perfectly uniform look at that. And you can make that just as round as you want. Isn't that glorious? Now we just go ahead Put that to place that on our pan and yes it'll rise a little bit we'll actually put it on an angle i think we'll let that rise a little bit we'll let that uh, position in there a little bit we'll draw that together because remember we're going to have a rather small one too so we'll get, go ahead and form up the recipes and remember once it's on and it's on your pan you can go in on the side and push in from the bottom like I'm going to show you right here and what that does is effectively pinches it in and you can use a little bit of flour on your hands don't be worried about sticking and what that does is form a perfect baguette there look at that hmm? the baguette the baguette <laughs> all right I'm going to go form the rest of them then they're going to go into the oven and they're going to rise I'll see you
Okay, there they are perfectly formed so they're going to be covered now with a little bit of foil make sure you spray it first and they're going to go into the oven for about a half hour and then we're going to do our uh, after about 15 minutes we're going to take them out of the oven let them sit on the counter and then we're going to fire our oven up as hot as it goes it's getting more fun by the minute here We went ahead and uh, transferred because they were getting a little too excited over there on just one pan. They needed a little more room. So I've kind of spread them out. And yes, I have a little baby one there too. Isn't that cute? Now we come to the fun part of the process. I have the oven. It's 700 degrees. I'm now going to turn my oven to the light and fan. I have a convection oven, so I've now turned that to the convection part. And what I want to do now is to go ahead and uh, do a little bit of what they call cross, uh, a little bit of uh, scoring of these baguettes. Okay, so we want to take a very sharp knife and make sure it's very clean and very sharp. And we just want to make some scores right down just like so and you can see the way I did that okay you don't have to overdo it but this this allows a little room for the bread to expand and not to uh, not to exp explode and make sure you go all the way through about one quarter of the way down okay using a very sharp knife okay and score these here draw it all the way through okay just like that okay like i said if it's getting a little bit crazy you can sort of push it together i have one little hair bump there and you can just score those baguettes right down like that and press good and firm so it's going down okay and you can see how that looks there and that's about all you have to do okay This has been really fast and really easy today to have really tasty bread the same day. Okay, so we got everything all scored good. All right, just make sure it's all the way down there. And that helps relieve a little bit of the pressure in there, okay? The next thing we wanna do is we have one egg, egg yolk. The yolk only beaten with a little bit of milk and we're going to do an egg wash on top. We're going to take this with our brush here. We're going to brush it on top of our baguette here. Okay, don't worry if a little bit runs down the side. This is what makes it really brown and really glorious here. It's a fun part of the whole process. Besides eating it, I think. Hmm? Put that on nice and generously. Just work that all over. Don't crush the bread. Just get a good coating on top of it, okay? You all really right. need to have a water bottle, an atomizer, and just before, just before you're ready to put these in the oven, the very last thing you want to do, your oven's all really hot, is you want to give one spray on top of these and right into the oven they go, okay? Here they go. Okay, we're gonna put five. We're gonna put about the seven minutes on the timer because these are small. We're not gonna let these go crazy here. This oven is super hot. So I'm gonna check it after about seven minutes, take a little peek and see how they're doing. We're looking for boom, a really huge rise right here in the volume of these. Okay. It's getting awful exciting here today. Okay, it's been about uh, seven minutes. We'll take a little peek inside of here now. Oh, yeah, and they've already started to brown beautifully. It's now time to turn our heat down to about 325 degrees. And we're going to take a look at these again in about 15 minutes. And remember, these are small. These aren't big size loaves, okay? Let's be careful. 
let's not ruin all of our hard work, okay? Are you like totally excited? Our timer just went off and I think our beautiful baguettes are ready. And I don't think anyone's ever gonna know that, that you didn't go to a bread shop and buy these, okay? Let's go ahead and pull them out. Oh, and look at the glorious color on that. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Look at that, huh? Beautiful French style baguettes. I'll bring it down for a closer look. Don't they look amazing? Don't they just look amazing there? Those beautiful baguettes with glorious color. They are going to be so good for eating. Wonderfully cooked. You can see the size that they grew to. Just beautiful. Okay, we'll just have a few final words and we'll wrap it up. I want to thank you all so much for being here today as we whipped up in pretty quick order some really beautiful baguettes that are going to be excellent to eat and I think Jen you're really going to enjoy having them. They go so nicely on a uh, cold day when it's a damp, just a nasty weather day and it's wet and dreary. There's nothing like a, uh, a nice hot bowl of soup or stew with some really great homemade bread. You don't always have to start your bread a day or two ahead of time to achieve spectacular results. Sometimes you can cheat a little bit by adding an ingredient. And today we added that chicken powder, powder which helped make things a bit more savory, okay? And much better, and that gave a much deeper flavor to our baguette. So, you know, you can, uh, sometimes technique can win out over time. So thank you for being along as usual. I'll let Missy Jen uh, send you out as only she can. I'll give her a little... <laughs> I guess I'll have to send you out. So I want to thank you all for being here today. And uh, if you saw the, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the share button. And please leave us a nice comment below. And uh, thumbs up are most appreciated. And uh, subscribe. We love people being on the channel, don't we? <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks so much for being along. Hugs, love, and kisses. Mm -hmm. Toodles.